Good evening, everyone. Welcome to RadioSilentPlay.com. I am your moderator for today on July 20th, 2014. Let me start off by saying I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence before trading any stock or option. Trading stocks and options require lots of risk. Okay, again, let me start off by saying, uh, I know I say that a lot, but uh, we have since then lost a lot of uh, some traders. Okay, it's like uh, spring training. Some guys don't don't cut it into the fall, but uh, we do have some new members. So welcome all new members. Okay, welcome to the new members that have signed up. Okay, and I also want to thank those that uh, are kind of moving on. I know they have a couple of days left on, on you know, with the team. So uh, we're going to try to make the best of it. Okay, so um, let me just uh, do a recap of what the markets are doing. Okay, the market's still a little bit lackluster. You have a, a couple of stocks that are, are testing 52-week lows. I've had trouble uh, holding. And for the most part, we've had a, a nice week. Okay, we had a move with PGCX. Okay, we had, I believe it was a pretty solid move off the bottom. It was about 330%. And then we had the FLST um, from the lows when it was at 11, hit a high of 41. Okay, since then it's trading um, and, and consolidating uh, right right at that 16 level, which is uh, the 61% retrace from that 41 level. So, all right, I'm going to give a, a, a couple of minutes for, for traders to uh, to get uh, a little bit situated. I know some guys don't have, um, are not on right now, but this will be recorded. Okay, this will be recorded. So, if you guys can, just please uh, press the or, or type the conference number on uh, GroupMe and uh, the organizer code if you guys can. Okay, so we could get this thing started. Recorded. Again, so traders that are having trouble uh, listening in or getting locked out, this will be recorded. I'm going to go over OTC weekly watch list. I'm going to do a little bit of the option traders, okay? And I'm going to go over uh, pretty much, you know, what we did, what we updated on the on the on the website for uh, July 21st. Okay, so just bear with me. Please leave your questions, okay, and remarks towards the end. I will get a chance to um, answer those questions at the end if you guys want to look over some charts and uh, some stock tickers. So um, just uh, save all your questions and remarks towards the end, and I'll look, look them over. Okay, so what I'm going to go over right now is the weekly watch list for July 21st, 2014. Okay, as I mentioned, there's a lot of stocks that are actually testing 52-week lows. And for some, they haven't been able to hold, okay? And, and um, we're kind of going to try to uh, trade these, uh, these levels and and actually get the best potential entry with these stocks. Okay, so this is a, a stock that we've traded before, TNN, T-N-E-N. I posted the weekly watch list on this one, okay? Um, it it kind of gave a low entry of 13 last week. Since then, okay, right now, on Friday, it closed at 16. Okay, so this is an oil and gas exploration stock. Okay, as many know, as of now, we have a lot of um, instability in the geopolitical uh, uh, spectrum. Okay, you have issues with the Ukraine and Russia. Okay, you also have uh, issues uh, with Palestine. Okay, so there is a lot of instability right now in the markets. And if you notice, the big boards took a big hit. Okay, whenever you have instability, 
uh, abroad, okay, have a direct effect on oil, gas, any commodities out there. Okay, so I'm, what I'm looking at on the TNN trade, okay, I'm looking at a buy zone from 13 to 16 initially, okay. If I get in between 13 to 16, okay, this box range right here, okay, my stop close is going to be below 13 on two consecutive closes. Okay, if it, the stock closes below 13, then I'm going to look at the 0009 to 0 0.011 buy zones. Okay, and so that's the probability range. Okay, so with this summertime, okay, we must take into a consideration that it is a little bit of a seller's market. Okay, so if we can get a chance or we look at the level two and, and there's a strong bid between 13 and 14, we can look to buy that, that level. Okay, and then we'll have a stop close below 13 on two consecutive closes. If it closes below that level, what then, okay, the tr trade will reassess and that entry level will be 0009 to 11. Okay, and that stop close will be below 0009. This is actually 0009 um, two times. Okay, the previous 52 week high on this stock is 0 0.04. Okay, the pivot, I'm looking at this pivot range right here at this level, which is the 0 0.0025. If we get a stop close, or a correction, if we get a close above this 25 level, I see us uh, retesting this 39. Okay, so uh, that's the set setup for TNN. Okay, TNN, if we look at, um, let's take a look at the, the share structure on Tina. Okay, the share structure on Tina. It's a pretty light share structure. So um, we had an average volume of three million. Okay, on Friday we had. Uh, 5 million volume. And if you look over here, okay, since uh, January 2014, we have authorized shares of 750 million. You got a flow to 41 million. So not many shares out there. So even if you you were able to, to bottom uh, feed these uh, stocks, okay, at 52 week lows or um, buy any of those zones, okay, I think these, these stocks will bode well. Okay, moving on. Okay, so I want traders to keep TNN, T N E N on watch for, for next week. Okay, this is a trend channel play. This is a stock that we've traded before. It's VTMD. They had news on marijuana. Okay, they had a tarp for uh, LED growing uh, or growers. Okay, so um, I think they had a, a news on Shark Tank, uh, Mark Cuban's show, and the stock rallied. Okay, right now, if you look, Okay, on the weekly chart, this is actually the weekly chart. You have a, a channel here. If you connect this pivot low, okay, back in November, December area, 2014, or actually 2013, and you, you hit this bottom level, which we hit last week, okay, it's holding a, a good support. Right now you have an RSI on the weekly, 29, okay. If you can manage to buy this stock from 18 to 21 on any pullback, Okay, you could see this this stock test this 40 range, this 71 range. Okay, I like the risk reward there. Now, if the stock closes below 18 on two consecutive closes, that means you stop out of the trade. Okay, you take a short loss. Then what you'll look at is uh, that probability zone again. Okay, and that'll probably be down to uh, uh, the the 10 11 range. Okay, so just watch that VTMB. VTMB does have quite a bit of shares. All right, so um, the VTMB does have some, some shares. Okay, so just watch the level two on VTMB. Okay, so the VTMB trade does have some shares. You have an average volume of 2.3 million. On Friday, we had 1.3 million, okay? 52-week high was 0.01. Okay, if you come look at the share structure, you do have authorized shares of 4.9 million. Okay, outstanding shares of 1.5 million. So there are some shares out there. So traders uh, should understand that 
okay, uh, this stock does have a, a certain amount of shares. So you want to pay close attention to the level two, okay, when trading the VTMD. But I do like that channel. The channel is holding quite well. And the stock has, has rallied before in the past. Okay, the W pattern trade. This was a stock that I actually sent out um, last week. I sent out an email as well. It didn't pick up uh, too many uh, or too much uh, momentum. It was a Friday, but looking at the, the level two, you did have a, a good support at that triple zero nine and that 10 range. Okay, um, the stock did hit that, that 10, but it managed to close at 11. Okay, this is a, a W pattern, all right? We saw this in gold not too long ago. Right now, we have gold rallying. Okay, so this is PSWS, okay, the water purification company. It's testing its 52-week low support, and now at a probability range of 0009 to 11. Now, for the new members out there, okay, the probability ranges means that, okay, the stock is trading between 0009 to if you do the difference of percentage wise, okay, you have a 20% risk. So if the stock closes below 0009, okay, you're getting in between 9, 10, 11, you're taking less risk with higher reward, okay? That's what I deem the probability trade, okay, the safe area, okay? The potential of that stock hitting lower, okay, is less risk than uh, the stock going higher, okay? And if you do see over here, it's actually forming a W pattern. Okay, so my buy zones would be triple zero nine to eleven. Okay, on any pullback, previous fifty-two week highs at point zero one seven. Okay, pivot would be that fourteen, which is that twenty-day moving average. Okay, the next pivot after that would be that twenty-two, which is that fifty MA. Okay, so you have a nice upside here. You could get maybe fifty, hundred percent on this trade. Okay, but just watch that level two again. Okay, you don't want to. You don't want to get stopped out. All right, so um, a bullish consolidation pattern, okay, with pinch, P-N-C-H. I actually sent this out. Um, one of the members, I believe it was Nicodemus, mentioned the stock, okay, in the chat room. Okay, when I was looking at the stock, okay, it was thin on both apps, the bid and the ask. Okay, um, I never said it was a bad stock or anything. You know, I, I kind of like, you know, I, I you become very cerebral when looking at these uh, stocks, especially during trading hours. And what I noticed was that even when the, when the stock would pull, pull back, you had a decent support at seven and eight, okay? And the stock did test at nine and never broke below that triple zero nine level. All right, so this is an entertainment company that's traded as high as 30, and now has consolidated and found its bottom, All right? I'm gonna scroll down just so you can see that, that chart. Okay, this is that bottom chart right here. If you notice, it's never really closed below this A level. It tested at seven, but never closed or confirmed below that level, okay? So my buy zones over here would be 0009 to 11, okay? Previous 52 week high over here is 30. You got a pivot, okay, of 21, okay? Which is this level right here, which is the 50 day moving average. Okay, so I think that this area is a safe area to buy, all right? So right now the stock, okay, is trading right below its 20-day moving average or right at the 20-day moving average at 12. If you see or manage to get uh, or, or the stock closes on Monday above 12, it closes above 12 on two consecutive closes, then you have that support at 12, that 10 to 12, which is a 20% risk, okay? You have upside to about 21, and then from that, that level, you have a little bit of a gap fill over here. So gap fills usually get filled back, all right? And if you're buying down here at the 10, 12 range, you could probably see that 24, 25 range hit. Okay, I don't give people exits, but that's a nice, pretty, a pretty strong move up to that gap fill potential, all right? And then you have a stop close below 0009, which gives you a minimum risk on the trade. Okay, so I want traders to understand, these are what I call trading the levels, all right? I'm not gonna tell you guys that these guys are coming out with with news, you know, if you look at the website, it's a pretty decent website. I think they've had uh, uh, news in the last uh, couple of months. Let's, let's take a look at Pinch with their news. I believe they had Victoria's Secret on their on their website.
Okay, so you have an average volume of 2.2 .2 million. Okay, that's for three months. On Friday, you saw 5 million in volume. Okay, you had a, a range, I believe it was about 10 to 12, if I'm, if I'm correct. And um, if you come look over here, okay, fairly low outstanding shares. Um, it's not really showing what the authorized share and float, but monitoring the way the stock has traded in the last few days, it's pretty light, right? It's got a working website, okay? It deals with the, the entertainment field. Okay, if you come down here, okay, they had a short film, okay, on June 24, 2014, The Lone Hunter. And then you had, okay, Venus and Fur. Roman Polanski. Okay, and it's uh, got a couple of stars. I think it had a Victoria's Secret thing over here in London. All right, so. So it's a running website. It's got a working website. Okay, if we look at the news, let's take a look at the news. Okay, you just recently had news on uh, June 11th, 2014. Okay, June 4th, 2014. So they, they've been updating pretty much. Okay, American Pie, Final Destination producers to lead productions at IC places. Okay, everybody knows that American Pie and Final Destination um, were, were in the movies. So uh, this guy's the producer. IC places, science previous project runway winner at the lead Spanish language version of Imagination TV. Right and uh, so forth. Okay, so you have um, you have the stock putting out some news. Okay, in the last couple of months, so it is an active stock. Okay, this is a high play. Okay, I'm not bashing the stock if anything, but I just do notice that um, a lot of people, a lot of traders, are posting this on social media. Okay, I, I I'm going to start labeling these things. Why I want think that uh, the stocks are going to go up. But um, this was a stock that we traded before uh, the reverse split. Since then, it's reverse split, and now it's trading at 0 0.029, and that's UPZS, that's Unique Peaks and Subs. Okay, um, with the summer, you're gonna get a lot of traders to focus on that one stock, right? And if the traders focus on that one stock, that means that it's gonna have a decent amount of liquidity, right? So. The UPZS, when we first traded this, this was back, I believe, uh, last year. I believe it was in December. Okay, if you go over to um, the search area on the website, you type in UPZS, you can see that we traded this at 0008.23, right? Then it reverse split and has been accumulated at lows. On Friday, for several last trading days, it has been accum accumulated at lows after the reverse split. So in the last three days, the stock has been accumulated significantly after three months. Volume average of uh, 461,000. Okay, we had a Friday volume of over 8.6 million. Okay, so that's that right there should get traders to understand we have volume in the stock, a significant amount of volume. Okay, now seems like traders and groups are posting on stock with slower summer. You can follow the volume and scalp the stock traded correctly. Could possibly be a solid scalp for percentage gains. Okay, so this is what I mean in trading this stock. Again, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's being promoted or paid promotions, but I do see a lot of traders posting on it. Okay, but um, in the last three trading days, you had okay traders add as low as 0.013 to 0.018. Okay, so if 0.013 and 0.018 were the bottoms, okay, you really typically look at the 100% uh, fib fib levels. Okay, so you would you would say uh, double 0 0.018 would be 0 0.036, right? So that's your key level of resistance, right? So I want traders to understand that because I, I, I last week or a couple of weeks ago, they told me that they bought FLST. I got a, a, uh, an email or a message on uh, Facebook saying that they had bought in the high threes and fours, right? Um, and I actually gave that trade when, uh, you know, the stock was at, 
at uh, low volume levels, and it was at 11. Now, I'm not gloating about that, but I just noticed that that was a good entry because it was at uh, probability range. And the way I send out my stocks, I know a trader had said, hey, but FLST has no volume, and uh, why should we buy this now? And I, I, typically I say, you know, you buy the stock, you know, when it's hated. You buy the stock when there's not much volume and you, you have a support the, there just in case for any move higher. And, and it did just that. It went up 300%. So, um, you know, you had members start posting on the stock and, you know, saying that it was going to go up to a penny uh, news. And since then, the stock now is trading at, at 17. Okay. So well, going forth. All right, all right. We understand that you know these stocks are getting volume, right? Um, it has low share structure. Okay, since the post, you know, reverse split. Now, uh, the likelihood of that stock not splitting again is is probably probably likely. They're not they're not gonna split, you know, after they've they've done a split a couple of months ago. Okay, so I posted the profit spy over here, and if you look. On the 16th, 17th, and 18th, this is where the majority of the, the volume was, okay? So you have that 0 0.0135 level, okay, which was the low price, and then you had a low of 0 0.0157. So you're going to have, okay, uh, moderate resistance at 0 0.03 to 0 0.036. Okay, those are the levels that you're going to look at for resistance. So I, I probably would not buy at resistance levels. Now, if the stock manages to close above those resistance levels on two consecutive closes, then you have, okay, the option two of 0 0.029 to 0 0.032, a close confirmation above 0 0.032 two times. You could have a target from uh, 0 0.05 to 70 to 0 0.075. Okay, and that's uh, a stop close below 0 0.03. And why is that? Why would I say that? Because if you look at this channel right here, okay, just like we saw on the MNVN the trade, it had that channel, but then it broke, and it broke below this level. If it breaks below this 0 0.0147 level, okay, you have downside, because then it's a failed signal. Okay, so my possible entry, or my optimum entry, would be an entry between 0 0.0147 to 0 0.018. Will it get there? I'm not sure. You don't need to, you know, take the trade. If you want to say, you know what, I want to get this stock if it gets to this level. This is where I want to buy. Okay, with a stop close below uh, 0 0.0147. Okay, it's probably the safest entry on the stock. Now, the option two would be, okay, buy it somewhere around here and just wait for the stock to close above this level right here, this line. This line is about 0 0.032 to 36, and then you'll have upside to 5 to 7. Okay, and my stop close would be right here below this 3 because if it go, uh, closes below this this 0 0.032 level, then you have downside down to uh, to this bottom of this trend line, right? So that's how I would I would trade this, and I'll answer questions later on about this trade if you want. Okay, again, I'm not bashing the stock. I'm not saying that it's not going to do anything. Okay, but I just want to give you guys levels because if you guys are thinking about getting into this this stock, okay, that's how I would look at it. Now, it may not do this, okay. But this is the strategy how I would go and uh, and utilize this this setup to get into that trade. Okay, so these are the small caps. I haven't posted too many. I, I had a couple of candidates as well, but um, I didn't I didn't post on them. So UPCS. Okay, I put um, two two ways to get into the trade. Okay, you could probably scalp it. You have that pinch which I think is a good bottom consolidation, bullish consolidation down here. Okay, and then you have that W pattern on the PSWS. The trend play on the VTMB, okay, on the weekly. And then the TNN trade, okay, this bottom level. I think you can bottom fish this stock down here. Okay, so that's uh, the weekly watch list. That is the weekly watch list. Okay, now I'm going to go over some options. I know I'm going to do this fairly quick. Um, I haven't been doing this, and I know we have a couple of option traders uh, in the team. 
and there was a move on the on the SPY not too long ago, and uh, the SPY we had news of. Uh, I don't even think that that it posted. All right. Well, I'll get that. Um, I'm gonna have to update the the, the week the options because I I could have sworn that um, the options got the options were posted, but I'm gonna have to update that. So. Okay. So the USO. Okay, we bought this at thirty six dollars and sixty cents last week. And since then, it's trading at that $37.90. I still feel that the stock will move higher, okay? But move your 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 stocks at 36.60. I have two other trades that I'll probably post later on. I had um, uh, the ECW, and I believe it was another stock as well. But I'll post that. I got totally caught off guard over here, so um, I will post that tonight for you guys. I apologize, or I'll make another video for, for the option guys. I could have sworn that I, I fixed it up, but probably some technical difficulties with the, with the options. But I'll get back to that video, and I'll promise to uh, update that. So I'm going to go jump into the small caps. Okay, for the small caps, I know some, some of you traders um, don't trade the small caps, but it, it's, it's got a good opportunity to uh, trade the small caps. Typically, you're going to have to use a little bit more money on small caps to make these trades, okay? But I, I feel that small caps, last week we had a couple of small stocks trigger, and they're doing well right now. So um, I was looking at the CACH, okay, CACH, right at that bottom buy zone levels, okay? Closed at 133, and it's been consolidating down here. I think that $1.20 to $1.30 is a good entry. Okay, we could see this test of uh, the 20-day moving average, a dollar fifty and a dollar sixty. Okay, pretty good move. Um, I think it's about a 20% to 30% move. Okay, again, typically you have to put in a certain amount of money to to get a nice profit. Out of these. You can't just put in $300 and expect the big big large sums. But uh, for traders that like the small caps, okay, they're fairly liquid and they you know they usually have good um good liquidity so you don't have to worry about the stock you know going no bid or not being able to sell so i do like the cach trade it was actually brought up by uh one of our traders he he, he shed some light on it last week and it's held pretty well okay nlst a dollar 16 to a dollar 24 okay if i you connect this pivot low okay it is holding that that support Okay, I'm looking at that dollar sixteen, a kiss of that twenty and fifty day moving average, which are meeting over here. Okay, for a move up to a dollar thirty five, a dollar forty five. I think that overall the stock can hit a dollar fifty to dollar seventy. So I like I like that entry. All right. Since then it's it's starting a, a bit of an uptrend over here. It did have a, a topping tail, okay, up in a dollar sixty. So that's where your your major uh, resistance will be that dollar fifty to a dollar sixty, but um, buying that dollar twenty, okay, you could see a nice twenty to thirty percent move on that trade. Okay, so just watch that NLST. Okay, so that's the small caps. Okay, again, and and I will go over a couple of options. I'll make a, a different video for you option guys. Now, I haven't forgotten about you, right? Uh, options right now, uh, we have a cycle date next week. Okay, I'm I'm thinking the July 21st to the 24th. I feel that um, the markets could see uh, a dramatic uh, correction. Okay, um, let me just look at. Uh, I think I got a. Just give me one sec. One second. Where is that? Where is that? Spot chart. Where is that spot chart? Okay, let me just do this real quick for, for the option traders. I know we got a couple of option guys here. Okay, the SPY entry right now, we're holding um, support. Last week, on the day that the plane fell, okay, and we had issues with Palestine and Israel, 
we had a close at 195, but it never confirmed. The next day it closed at uh, 197 range, okay? What I'm looking for, okay, is these setups. What I really want to see is the markets close twice below 196. If the markets close below 196 two times, then that's going to signal a breakdown in the market, okay? If that happens, then what we'll do is we'll pick up the VXX, okay, and the SDS. My target one on the SPY would be 194.60, okay, and a target two would be 193.50, okay, with downside down to the 189 level, which is a 100-day moving average, okay? So I want traders to understand that. That's what I really want to see is for the markets to close two times below that 196 level. Then any, any move higher, okay, testing this range, we would pick up the SDS, the VXX, okay, or the SPY uh, puts. Okay, another, another one which I think is a little bit riskier would be an entry between 198.50 to 199. Okay, that's buying this level right here, this top of this channel. Okay, my stock close would be a close below 200 or above 200, I'm sorry, on two consecutive closes. And my target would be 196.50 and my target two would be 195. Okay, and then a close um, below that level, then we would straight shot and do this. Okay. So again, my cycle day for next week will be uh, July 21st to the 24th. That's when I think that we'll get a high volume okay, and a signal on what the markets are going to do next week, right? That's just for options, right? I, I'm, I will do another video, and I will uh, talk about my sentiment on uh, gold. I feel that gold uh, could see a, a pullback and a, and a huge move, okay, because we got an inverse uh, head and shoulders on the GDX would be a great opportunity to buy on the pullback. But again, I will make another video on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple of um, – Candidates that I was watching for uh, OTC weekly watch list. Okay, um, I noticed that the raise R A Y S raise stream has been seeing a significant uh, volume and move. Okay, it did close above that triple zero seven. Okay, you have a fifty and twenty day moving average that's met. Okay, it hit a high of ten. Okay, closed at the high of the day. Okay, I don't know if they're Traders are, are going to start uh, trying to send this out to, to members, but, you know, there's obvious accumulation at this range. Previous high was a high of 15. So what I would do here, okay, is I would buy, okay, either the pullback down to 6, 7, 8, okay, and then scalp it either to 10, 12, and possibly a move to 15. Okay, so that would be the 6, 7 reentry, okay. And the stock closed below seven on two consecutive closes, which is that uh, 50 and the 20-day moving average. Okay, so we saw a significant move on on the raise. Okay, I did the Fib retrace levels, and what I got was that six seven uh, range for that entry. Okay, if you can buy that six seven, you want to place your bids. Okay, for a move to test that 10 12, you possibly have a scalping range there on the R A Y S. Okay, let's take a look at FBEC, FBEC. This is a stock that we've traded before. I believe we got in um, um, not too long ago. I think it hit a, a low of 10 and, and it hit a, a high of 16. Since then, it's broken down. Okay, it's holding that 0008 to 11 probability ranges. The pivot price on this would be at 14, which is the 20-day moving average. My stop close would be 8. Okay, and this has upside potential. Okay, to this uh, return of the scene of the crime right here at that 20 range. Last time it was at 20, it hit this high of 80. Okay, so I like the risk reward here. I would buy okay, anywhere in this box, which is 0008 2.0011. Okay, TCPS, this was a candidate that we had on the weekly watch list, okay, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Okay, it gave a bottom entry of 17, it, it hit a high of 22. So traders that bought at that um, at that 16, 17 level, okay, or place their bids, now the stock is trading at 22. Okay, so you have this bit of a consolidation pattern. Okay, the scene of the crime here is at 29 level right here. Okay, so if it gets up to 29, that's the pivot. Okay, I put the pivot at 24, but 
Really what I want to see is that stock close above 29 on two consecutive closes. And look at that move that I had when it hit that 29. It had a high of 0 0.019. Okay, so buying these bottom, these bottom levels, okay, should bode well for the TCPS. Okay. So just keep that in mind, TCPS. And get a notepad and pen. You know, write these things down. Because uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we had a good trade with the NSAV. We had a good trade with the BBRD. And just uh, keep these levels in mind, all right? Because sometimes I don't post them on the, on the weekly watch list, but you, have, you get some nice trades over here on uh, recapping these, uh, these charts. Okay, the IDOI, when we traded the IDOI before, I believe that it hit uh, or it tested at seven and then it hit a high of uh, 12. And then since then it's broken down. But the IDOI right now is posting, okay, is posting that triple zero four five bottom buy zones. Now, one of the reasons I'll, I'll post on IDOI is because what's the sentiment right now? The sentiment right now is unfortunately terrorism, okay? I'm not, um, you know, trying to to uh, to profit all, off of this, but what you have to do is, you know, you have to look at the trends. You have to um, take into consideration the significant uh, uh, reason behind uh, what's going on in, in this uh, in this geopolitical uh, okay world that we have today. All right, right now, okay, we're we're listening about I Iraq, the ISIS. You're looking, you're you're listening about homegrown terrorism. You're listening about, you know, issues with the Ukraine. You know, um, airplanes getting shot down out of the sky. So security right now is going to be at its all-time highs right now. Okay, so just be ready. Okay, be ready for stocks like um, what stock tick sets, SAFS, SAFS. Okay, that's another one. That's safe shot. Look at IDOI. Okay, triple zero five with. They do airport security. Look at Sybil, CYBL, military stock that is at triple zero one. Okay. Um, these are the type of stocks that can catch a bid during uh, military um, instability abroad. Okay. So um, right now what we're looking at, okay, the stock has not yet closed, okay, below triple zero five. It's touched that triple zero four level. But I think buying these buy zones over here could bode well for a buy, set, and forget. Okay, so watch that IDOI. Okay, so my IDOI, what I would do is look to bid triple zero four to five bottom low lateral, the stop close below triple zero five. That's what I would do on this stock. Okay. Okay, AML, A M E L. Okay, this is a lithium stock. Okay, just like we were talking about trends, lithium usually does well. When the price of of oil or any commodity surges, okay, or if you have uh, new phones coming out, lithium batteries, lithium powers pretty much every, you know, um, laptop and any cell phone, okay, that's, that's pretty much known in uh, the technology world, all right, so um, like stock ticks right now, you know, you mentioned Tesla, Tesla, one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, electrical cars out there, you know, they, they run on this lithium energy, right? So lithium, okay, is something that traders have to consider that is a, a strong commodity, especially when the prices of oil surge and, uh, you know, energy costs move up, okay? We are in an inflationary period, okay? So traders have to understand that you want to buy these stocks, okay, typically when nobody's watching them. And ammo, okay, right now, I'm looking at it, it closed at 22. But you have a buy zone down here, okay? Even if, you know, you can't enter these stocks at the third bottom, you'll watch the level too, okay? If you see a huge support at 13, 14, and 15, then, you know, maybe taking a bite out of uh, the 17, 18, 19 levels for a move higher. If you look at this stock back in February 2013 from this range, the stock saw a high of 0 0.02, okay? You're talking about a, a, a 10 bagger over here, okay? So buying these stocks sometimes and holding on to them, it, it doesn't hurt, okay? So what I want traders to take into consideration is watch these stocks that I mentioned, write these, these stocks down, okay? Because placing $300, $400, okay, on these stocks, 
that uh, usually pay off, especially when we start getting into the uh, fall, when, when all these traders are out there, they start sending out newsletters, you know, and you're already in the stock. Okay, ammo is a, a trade that, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind holding, right? If we look at ammo over here, A-M-E-L. Okay, 52-week range is at 13. Okay, high is at 0 0.02, which we saw in February. Average volume is 5.9 million. We saw a volume of 8.9 million. Closed at 33%. Okay, five ticks higher on Friday, right? So we could have a bottom there. If you look at the company profile over here, okay, it's got a working website, which is American Lithium, and shares outstanding is 424 million shares, and that was updated April 24th. Actually, April 25th, 2014. So keep ammo on radar. Okay. Okay, grass, Greenfield Farms, Food Inc. Okay, this is a stock that, you know, is pretty much up and down. Sometimes you see uh, the stock, you know, having to trade a, a, a good amount of shares for, for a move, but it's had, it's had moves in the past. Okay. If you look back in April 2009, and 14, you saw the, the stock hit triple zero nine and hit a high of, of 28.30 level, okay? Now the stock, okay, tested at triple zero five. Okay, it's held. Okay, never closed at triple zero five, held at six. Six closed, and right now, I'm looking at the grass, buy zones, triple zero six, to even possibly nine, okay, are the buy zones. My pivot break is at close above this area right here, point zero zero one. If it closes above this area, Okay, we could see that 15 tested and then 28. I, I believe um, one of the traders on uh, group me mentioned that um, this would be showcased or uh, pushed by uh, groups. So I did mention this last week. I think it's it's good range. You see this bottom bottom uh, bottom tail over here. We've got a little bit of the divergence. Okay, you see this MACD about to come positive. So um, just watch that grass. I think grass. With inflation, you're gonna, you know, grass, greenfield farms, anything food, okay, during these times, okay, should bode well, right? So watch that GRAS trade, okay, TBEV, okay, TBEV is a, a stock that um, I like around these ranges, okay, you got a bit of a, a reversal over here, okay, what I would look at TBEV, okay, same thing like um the ammo or the f -back. look to buy these bottom these bottom levels okay because um they should they could bode well later on right if you look at this bottom here okay you want to try to add in this box box range i'm watching again at okay tbev right here okay if you can manage to buy anywhere in this box range okay should be a good buy Okay, so I want traders to watch the TBEV, TBEV. We've traded in the past. And we've made, you know, a good amount of money, TBEV. Okay, watch that one, two, two, let's say the point zero one seven. Even if you want to add a little bit higher or you want to, you know, look at the level two, just base it on the level two. See what kind of support you have on this, All right? But I do like this range. I mean, we'd be very, very lucky if uh, the stock hits 10 to 12, you know, that I'm probably going to send it via SMS. Okay, we got an RSI of 38, and the stock's traded very, very nicely for us before in the past. So TBEV is a trade that I'm, I'm actually looking at right now. All right, so watch that TBEV, TBEV. Okay. Just leave that there for reference. Usually save these uh, charts as well. Cause then I'll just send them out when uh, the SMS triggers. Okay, the DCAP, BCAP. Okay, if you look, the stock has been, uh, you know, considerable amount of volume. Um, it has a, a vast amount, you know, a good amount of shares on the stock, but the stock closed at its high of the day. Okay, so if the stock comes down, if you're lucky, five to six, watch that scalp to triple zero nine. You may be able to scalp this. And the stock may test this 17 high over here. So watch the BCAP. Does it have, you know, a good amount of shares on BCAP? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, but um, the stock has been seeing a good amount of volume. 
Okay, right now it is a CE, okay, caveat emptor. So uh, I want you guys to understand that it does have a CE on it, okay, but um, if the stock you see a good amount of support at 0.005 and it gets, you know, to hit your bid, okay, it could see a nice scalp range from 5 to about 8 to 9, so you could scalp it, all right? It's a bit of a riskier trade, but you have the stock trading above its moving average, all right? You have uh, 2.3 million outstanding shares. You have a float of 2.3 million authorized shares of 2.4 million. So it does have a certain amount of shares. So I want tra traders to take that into consideration. Okay. So that's pretty much what I have. Okay. For you guys. Okay. These are pretty much basically all the, the, the stocks that I've, um, I was looking at and some of them that I was actually looking to to send down on the weekly watch list. So if you guys have any any stocks that you guys want to talk about, okay, I'm gonna read uh, some of your comments. Okay. I I love to learn options, Nicodemus says I will start having a little bit more trading. Right now what we're looking at um Nicodemus is uh some levels for um these big boards to hit. Okay, I'm being very, very patient and disciplined on options as of now. So uh, there's been less, less action on the option side, but you know we will do um, more of these meetings with options, and we're going to teach some of you guys. When you guys do actually um, put in for options, you have to have at least 2.5k in your accounts. Okay, you have to request it through your broker. Okay, usually when you sign or fill out that application, you have to put down that um you know you make over forty thousand dollars you have over forty thousand dollars in assets because um they take in consideration margin and uh, they want you to actually know how to trade these options because sometimes what what happens is um you know when you're buying these options you're buying uh um the options to buy and what happens is some traders don't understand that and they're liable for those those uh those calls or those puts, if they don't sell their position and the broker wants to fill you, okay, you're buying actually uh, 100 shares per contract. So uh, just just be aware of that. And I, and I will um, do a further, further detailed, uh, okay, um, training on, on what options are. But, you know, um, I know Tango does them a lot. We have another guy. Um, we have a couple of other guys that trade them. So a really good opportunity in options as well. So. Okay, I am watching again the one we played weeks ago, TBEF, and also BCAP, your thoughts. I do think BCAP uh, could see a pullback. If we can get that five, six levels, I think BCAP could be a good uh, pullback level for uh, BCAP. EHOS, EHOS, that's a good one. I mean, I think uh, EHOS, EHOS, we traded it before. It's at um, new lows. Okay, I do like the EHOS trade. Okay, you have a bit of a reversal tail here. Okay, I think it hit a low of 11, I think. Um, okay, you had an average volume of 6.3 million. Okay, so it's fairly liquid. Okay, it closed at 18. Okay, uh, I think, I believe it had a low of 11, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, a volume of 2.3 million. So, oh, okay, Nicodemus says 14, I'm sorry. So it had a low of 14. So watch that level too. If you can actually buy that stock around this range, 14 to 18 would be pretty good. Okay, we've, we've seen what the stock can do, you know, in the past. Um, you know, you have two reversal tails here, close at the high. Okay, you have a little bit of a failed attempt over here, but um, it's been holding that 14 level pretty good. So, would have liked to see higher volume. Okay, so Nick says, all right, so um, there could be traders that are panicking around this, this range. Okay, this is the pivot right here. You want to close above this level to confirm and move higher. All right, so that's that pivot level. Um, Right now, you have an RSI of 38, okay? Um, you, you have seen uh, stocks 
break break lower. So um, 14, okay, 50% retrace levels. 14. I doubt the stock is going down to triple zero seven. So watch that 10, 11. You know, 10, 10 through 14 level. Okay, if you can place your bid there for buy, sell, forget. I think that would be pretty good. I'm lowballing this Nicodemus. You know, I'm not saying that you have a bad entry, but um, I do think that uh, the e host shouldn't be trading at these levels. All right. Um, you know, if you look at the the e host, the e h o o s. Um, okay, it's got a nice share structure. Okay, so um, authorized shares. 751 million. Okay, it was updated June 20th, 2014. So I like that. The float is 156 million, which was June 20, 2014. So it's transparent, updated, shares outstanding, 215 million. Okay, um, it's got a working website. Okay, beautiful website, professional. They sell a product. I like the EHOS level. Okay, I'm low boiling. Again, Nicodemus, I'm sure that you got a good entry. Okay, you got grab the starter. It's got a professional website. It's got a liquid vitamin D. Okay, lemonade uh, detox. Okay, so um, these homeopathic okay uh, products, these healthy uh, uh, things are very very good. Okay, sometimes you know you, you don't know where they're selling, whether they're selling on Amazon, QVC, selling in places like Walmart. Okay, um, this is a stock that I like. Okay, so watch the E H H O S. Okay, uh, Nicodemus is saying that um, that it has a uh, a different share structure here. Okay, two point five million. Uh, it's got two point five five billion. All right, so they they might have they might have raised shares here, but just watch that level two. All right. Watch the level two on EHOS, EHOS, okay? Um, I'm just, I, think, I think what we have to do is, is monitor the level two, okay? Because this is pretty old. This, that's from 2009. And if we look at the, Okay, if we look at over here on uh, the pink sheets, we're seeing an updated share structure as of June 20th, 2014. Okay, so I think that these levels could be a safe area to accumulate shares. Okay, again, we are in the summer cycle, so you could see the stock potentially hit lower, but this is a good stock to actually look at. So Nicodemus, I do like that uh, EHOS. We traded it in the past. And um, it's it's at a good buy zone right now. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at NHPI. NHPI was a stock that we traded before as well. Okay, um, we saw the stock uh, a, a potential entry at ten to eleven. Then it hit that high of 16, could not break. Now it's holding that um, that triple zero nine to 11 support probability range. Um, depending on um, depending on okay, we've we've broken that support okay of 11, right? So uh, what I don't want this stock doing. Okay, I would like to see this stock close above this 0 0.011 level. Okay, so I, I know that sometimes we say, okay, um, but that it's at a probability range, but it lost the support. Okay, so on this this day right here, it closed below this 11 range. Okay, and then the second day it closed again. So that to me, okay, is a two-day close or a stop close confirmation above that level or below that level. I'm sorry. So I would watch this stock, okay? Watch for any sellers into the stock. Typically, when I see a stock break below a certain stop, okay, I look for a 50% retrace level. Okay, that's how I trade, okay? When a stock breaks a certain support, I look at 50%. Okay, Mike, and I don't, I don't want to scare you, 
Okay, but the stock closed below this level over here. Okay, once and then it closed twice and didn't. Okay, so Mike says he doesn't have a position. All right, so what I would do, Mike, okay, previous 52 week low on this stock. And HPI and HPI. Okay, it was at 10, it closed at 11. Just watch that support at, at 52 week low at, at, at 0 0.0011, right? Um, watch the type of support it has. Okay, if it has a huge ask, okay, just, just let that stock kind of exhaust itself. And if the stock ends up paying, you know, let's say um, 00067, I think that might be a good, Good entry. I think uh, NHPI right now it has a decent amount of shares too. Um, it is in the oil gas sector. You got a two billion authorized shares. You have outstanding shares of one billion. Okay, so it could have a little bit of downside there. Okay, RSI on the NHPI is right now at 41. So you may see that 28, 30ish kind of level there. So um, I, I would I would monitor it. But at the same time, it could it could drop more, Mike. So just uh, bear in mind that it could drop a little bit more. All right? I would not say that it's at a probability range right now. Okay, let's take a look at URHN. URHN. You're welcome. Oh, okay. See, over here you have a nice consolidation over here. Okay. Very, very nice long consolidation period. Um, if you guys remember that uh, ECOP, ECOP had a huge consolidation and then it just broke out. Okay, URHN, Uranium Hunter, and now hasn't broken this level right here. Okay, so you've got a nice, nice consolidation. Um, if you guys never traded that ECOP, ECOB, okay, had basically the same level. It had a fair amount of shares on the ask, but the stock managed to, you know, break out big. And some of our traders did well on that stock. I think this is a good stock to start looking at. Okay, look at that support. Okay, it's at a probability range. So I do like this consolidation over here. Okay, usually what I say is the longer consolidation holds, the bigger the breakout. So I do think that you guys should put uh, URHN. And it was a good uh, catch, you know, good eye on the URHN. So watch the URHN. Let's take a look at... Um, what kind of uh, share structure we're, we're playing it with the UIHN? Okay, average volume is 17 million. You had a little bit of a low volume here. Okay, 98,000 shares. It's at triple eight. Okay, let's take a look at uh, shares. Okay, got an authorized shares of uh, 6 billion. Okay, so that's a concern. I don't know. Um, I haven't done any any research on the, on the company, but just watch the level two, all right? Because you could be coming in to a bottom here, all right? So just watch that URHN. Okay, so is there any other questions on any stocks, any concerns, okay, with anything that we've spoken or gone over? I know we have new members, okay? Again, I wanna welcome those new members. We do this every Sunday night, okay? Sometimes what we do is uh, we go over um, certain stocks, we go over some strategy, and also um, what we do is um, try to get a little bit more in depth so you guys can actually look at the trades and see how you would be actually bidding on these stocks and looking at the, the potential targets. Um, the other day I had a member ask me about FLST, and um, he says, oh, I got in late, and I told him, um, you know, you have to kind of pay close attention to where you're actually entering the trade. And he said, um, oh, well, I'm a noob. You know, I've never traded stock before in my life, but I just noticed that people were posting on it. And I'm actually down um, a certain amount of money. And it was, it was a big amount of money. So what I want traders to understand that here at Radio Silent Play, what we do is we manage risk. Okay, we assess a trade and we kind of go on that. Okay, we... Uh, we look at the best potential setup. Okay, I try not to, you know, hyper trade. You know, I, I look at the levels. If the stock breaks 
certain level. I will post that. I will update. Okay, so it's up to traders to decipher their trade and their setup. Okay, um, just want everyone to understand that we all can't get in at that best possible entry, but that's why we use our parameters. That's why if we need to enter that stock, 30% of our intended investment, okay, and then bid the rest, then we'll do that. Okay, we sell our stock. Okay, we privately sell our stock. We don't post that in our chat room. Okay, I had another another guy on, on Facebook. I'm, I'm not gonna mention any names, but he goes on there and um, he gets a little bit emotional and bitter and he goes, I, I just dumped all my FLST trade or my stock. I just dumped it. Uh, you just don't do that. I think that, you know, there's a little, little bit of honor in, in trading and you have to understand that you know, um, fashion a stock or saying, hey, I just lost this kind of money or I'm dumping this kind of amount of money. You just don't do that. All right. So I, I just want traders to uh, to understand that. That's why one of the reasons I used radio silent, you know, uh, radio silent, you want to be discreet. You want to kind of just, uh, you know, understand the, the objective and understand that you're, you're actually... Uh, you know, almost like playing poker. You don't want to show your hand. Okay, so I, I just want traders, new traders to understand that we're not sending out alerts. We're actually sending out setups. We're actually giving traders an opportunity to uh, to uh, smartly enter a trade. Okay, so Penny Goldmine says, last one. Okay, you have another stock, F-Tag, F-T-E-G. F-T-E-G. Okay, we got a bit of a, a reversal tail over here, FTEG. I think we did this in the past. Um, not many shares out there on FTEG. Um, I don't want to say we should uh, do another NNBN. It does have a low. Um, level 2 is fairly thin. Okay, it did hit that low of 2, and it closed at 5, which is a bullish, a bullish reversal. Okay, I don't know how many shares are on this stock, but uh, could be a, a nice move, okay? 50-day uh, moving average is at um, 0004, okay? So if you guys place a bid, buy, set, forget, at 3.4, pretty good, okay? Last time it was around this range, okay, it was over here and it hit a high of 0 0.03. I don't know if you had a reverse split over here or anything, but load accumulate, and if the stock fails, your stop exit and wait for a range entry and move on. Yeah, I, I do agree with that stock ticks. But um, I guess keep FTEG. All, all my main concern with FTEG is is that um, that volume. Okay, I know some traders sometimes get stuck on trades. So just uh, watch the volume. But it could be very light on, on the ask. And with some buy pressure, you never know. It could hit a high of 25. You know, so, you know, it could be one to watch. Okay, Kafka says MNVN, MNVN. All right, MNVN, you know, I, I'm still, um, you know, I'm still strong on the stock. I know some guys, it's been a little tough on uh, MNVN. Okay, but if, if you would have traded an MNVN and you could have, you, you know, really quote, um, made some with MNVN, all right, because there was a lot of back and forth with the MNVN trade. Okay. You see, um, we hit a low of uh, a new low of triple zero three, and it has this uh, cross over here, which signals a reversal. But again, you know, I don't know if the stock is or the selling into the to the to the to the stocks. Um, we don't know. We had a couple of cross trades there, but you know, from these levels, you have a twenty day moving average of thirteen, then a potential fifty at thirty one. You know, these are the type of uh, stocks that you keep in your back pocket. Okay, so I, I still feel that MNVN has that potential. I think traders that are accumulating these lows and buy setting and forgetting the stock, I think that in the in the later run, um, we're going to see a nice significant move higher. All right, so. All right, so with that said, okay, I am done. Okay, I'm, I'm done with um, the stocks. I will post uh, two option setups that I'm actually looking at, and I apologize for the option traders. Now I know that I could have sworn that I had that set up, set up for you guys, but 
I will post that later on tonight. I will send this video out to members, okay? And I will post this on YouTube later on during the week. But that's after um, a couple of these stocks have run, okay? So again, when I do send out this video, please do not share this until the stock or actually the, the, the video is sent out on YouTube, okay? So because um, you guys have the privilege. This is a privilege for you guys, right? Um, some of the guys that aren't paying members anymore, um, you know, you know, we put a lot of work into this. So, um, you know, you know, I try to give you guys the best product out there. So I just want traders to understand that. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow a.m. Okay, thank you all for being, you know, part of the team. And thank you for, you know, being here with us tonight. Okay, with that said, all have a good night. Take care.